Hey YouTube, uh, I'm doing just a quick video on my AR-15 setups and some philosophy and stuff behind it and how I think about uh, defensive arms as a whole. Uh, this is rifle and handgun. Uh, there's a lot of crossover in what I'm about to say. So, when I'm putting together a gun, I decide what the purpose is. Is it a fun gun? Is it a hunting gun? Is it a uh, self-defense gun? What What is it? What is it? So for my ARs, those are almost always defensive arms. So with that in mind, is that's how I go about setting them up. And as you can see, these are two different ARs, but I have them set up almost identically right now. And that's my goal, is so that I can pick up any of the guns that I own, and they're, they're, they're the same, same basic manual of arms. Nothing really changes. Uh, but along that extent, when I'm thinking about setting up a gun, one of the things I, I consider in the cost of the gun, because to me a gun is not ready to be relied on until it has a couple of key things. That's going to be for all guns, that's going to be a weapon light, and then for long guns that's going to be a weapon light, iron sights, and a sling. If it has those three things, and it's a reliable gun, I consider that a good to go firearm. If it doesn't possess one of those three things, it's a functional gun, but it's not what I would consider a defensive gun. Even if it had a red dot but no iron sights, I wouldn't consider that a defensive gun. For my personal uses, I like having the iron sights. Uh, in case the battery dies, something crazy happens, red dot breaks, falls off, anything. I like having my irons there as a backup. Uh, the sling, I like it because to me it's the same as a holster for a handgun. It's weapons retention, it's the ability to go hands-free when I need to. Uh, in, for me, again, the biggest part is weapons retention. I want that gun on me if I need it. If the situation is that bad where I need the gun, I need a way to keep the gun on me. Uh, weapon light, you got to know what you're shooting at. No two ways about it. You just have to. So as you can see the gun on the bottom, which is my 300 Blackout, uh, if you follow the channel, this is the same 300 Blackout that I did a video on before. It's my Sanders Armory. Uh, I changed out my upper. Um, I shouldn't say me. I took it to a gun shop because I didn't have the right uh, tools to mount it and take off the old handguard and flash hider and put the new uh, stuff on. So I took it down to a local gun shop called The Rock. Uh, guns and accessories, they do amazing work down there. Uh, Everything from Kydex and Cerakoting to cutting guns for red dots, yeah, they're they're amazing. So anything you need done uh, in the local area, hit them up. But yeah, so this gun here is a very nice, very clean, very simple setup. But I don't consider it done or a fighting setup yet, even though it functions. It functions well. It's got iron sights on it, so it's got a way to aim it and can be used. It's functional, but it's not a complete firearm in my mind because I don't have a sling one and I don't have a uh, light on there. Now both of those I should be getting here shortly and then this gun will be ready to go and I'll have both of my ARs in functional configurations. But I'm more doing this as a, a thought provoker. I, I want to get people thinking and considering what they want to do or think should be done to their ARs and their guns to be complete setups so that when you're looking to buy something new, buy your first one, something like that, you you can stop and think like, all right, what's the cost of ammunition going to be? What's the cost of the magazines going to be? What's the cost to get, a, uh, get good sights on there, to get a light, to get a sling, or whatever you determine for you makes it a fighting gun? And then go from there that way your budget is set up with that in mind uh, another good example of this i'll leave those here i'll just pull it out so you can see it for the first time is my new handgun so i picked up this uh smith and weston mmp um it is loaded it's my edc gun so that's why well, i'm kind of being a little bit careful with it but i picked this up uh over actually this now last month uh, I worked a summer camp to help get some extra money to pay for it. And when I was figuring out the price of this gun, I did the price of the gun itself. Uh, and I did have to order it online, so I had to get it for the price I wanted. So I also figured in the price of the FFL transfer fee. And not only did I figure in those two prices into the cost of my gun, but I figured in a good holster and a good weapon light. As you can see, I have the Streamlight TLR1. <laughs> 
on there loving that light so far but uh yeah when i was figuring out the price that's what i figured it into and i figured out how much it was going to come up to how much money i needed to get but i didn't stop there i also figured in because it comes with two magazines uh i figured in how much it would cost to get a third and how much it would cost me to get ammo so that all at the very minimum all three of those mags are loaded so i have the magazine and the gun and i have two spares stashed around one of them uh you'll see in another video it's on my belt with a setup i'm toying around with but the point is guns don't function on their own they need ammo they need support accessories and to me it's not even accessories i, I consider them part of the gun they're parts to make them functional to me a weapon light isn't an option it's not an accessory that i can add or i could take away it is a functional piece of the gun the gun is not complete without it i consider it a part not a, an accessory so and, and to clarify a little bit again the, the, a part of a gun is a functional necessity for the gun to function it requires parts to function i would consider weapon lights to be like that um Ammo is the same way. I, I, I'm not going to say I never do because I've done it before where I've bought a gun without considering the cost of ammunition and didn't have any ammo for a while to feed it so I didn't get to shoot it. It happens. We're, if you're a true gun guy, you get excited and you, you spend money on things you probably shouldn't until you, until you have a little bit more. But I'm rectifying that. I'm getting ammo for everything set up. Sorry, I'm messing with the focus. I didn't realize it was my hand. Um, but yeah, so I consider that the cost. I like for long guns, I want at least two magazines loaded. For a handgun, uh, so one for the gun, one spare. For handguns, I prefer three. I will do with two. Uh, one in the gun, one spare, but I would prefer to have two spares. So I can have different setups ready to go if I ever were to need them. And just a, a reload handy uh, as well. You never know what you're going to get into. That's the point of a defensive gun or offensive, or however you want to think about it. It's to be ready for that day that you don't know what's going to happen and what's coming. And be able <clears throat> to come out victorious because you put the time in and the forethought in to have guns, medical, ammo, knives, uh, flashlights, uh, even just rope and lashing. You put forethought in to avoid being the victim of a situation and having either your uh, day ruined and plans derailed just because you didn't have proper equipment or worst case scenario, a loss of life. That's the point of being prepared, being a sheepdog, owning guns is to be ready to handle a situation. And for me, the, it doesn't stop with guns. It doesn't stop with medical. It's an all aspects of life thing. I try to be prepared financially to help family members and friends when they need things, uh, whether that's either a need or a want. I try to be there for both uh, when I can. Uh, it's time, it's resources, so I make sure my ga my truck is gassed up so I can drive and help people. I make sure I have tools in the back. I make sure that I have uh, cordage in the back and all kinds of things. So if I show up and the object's bigger than we thought it was and one's not going to fit inside, well, we're not stopped. We throw it on the roof, tie it down keep moving to me being prepared being a protector and being a sheepdog it doesn't stop with fighting and medical and things like that it, it's vigilance in all areas of life it's vigilance in taking care of yourself it's vigilance in uh being prepared for the day-to-day -day things or just being there for somebody being prepared to stay up late with a buddy uh and talk and through some stuff and just be there for them when life gets hard uh to be there for sisters for mothers uh even dads when they just need you to show up for something it could be the littlest thing or just knowing that they want to see you and show, taking the time to show up that shows that you care that makes put you in a position that they'll want to listen to you and uh other things and when things are bad they know they can turn to you and count on you that you're going to be there for them and that to me is the importance of having my gun set up and having everything the way it needs to be. All right, guys, thanks for watching, putting up with that little bit of rambling there towards the end. Uh, if you got any questions on the gun setups or anything that I said in this video, throw them down below. I'll do my best to get back with you. All right, peace.